Chapter 8, IRAs and Pensions. The following forms and publications were used in the research and development of this lesson. Forms and publications are available at www.irs.gov. With the completion of this lesson, the student will understand the difference between pensions, annuities, and other kinds of retirement income, and to report each income. Generally, there are two types of clients, those that have retired and regularly receive pension distributions, they will give you a 1099-R. Or those who have withdrawn pension monies early and therefore also get a 1099-R but may have to pay an additional penalty. A pension is generally a series of definitely determinable payments made to the taxpayer after they retire from work. Pension payments are made regularly and are based on certain factors such as years of service with the employer, prior compensation, taxpayer's age, and the company's stated retirement age. An annuity is a series of payments under contract made at regular intervals over a period of more than one full year. They can either be fixed under which the taxpayer receives a definite amount or variable, not fixed. The taxpayer can buy the contract alone or with the help of their employer or financial advisor. Here is a sample of a 1099-R form. Again, the basic format is the same. All boxes must be set up in this manner, but again, a 1099-R you can find in a variety of shapes and sizes. You will see the payer's name, address, and city, state, and zip on the left below following the payer's federal ID number and directly to the right of that, the recipient's ID number or usually their social security number. The priority when you look at one of these is box one, gross distribution. Then taxable amount. Generally speaking, the same amount is in both boxes. Sometimes a payer will enter the gross distribution and not know what part is taxable or not and leave box 2A blank. Be sure as a tax preparer not to assume this means that that gross distribution amount is not taxable. In most cases, it probably is. And you need to indicate to do further research to investigate the amount that would be taxable. Sometimes you'll find box 2B checked for either taxable amount not determined or total distribution. But again, if you can't stress enough, box 2A blank does not mean there is no taxable amount. Another one very important that you usually will see filled out, and that is box 4, federal income tax withheld. Now key to also on the 1099-R is distribution codes which is box seven. Now this one, very much important. The primary code you will find is, box, is code one, which means you receive the distribution, but it will probably be with penalties because it was an early distribution. The common code is code seven. That's a normal distribution. Someone who's reached the minimum age and is receiving regular pension amounts they will have a code 7 there and no, pen, no further uh, penalties. But it, of course, the amount is taxable income. Always look also for state tax withheld or at least the state tax payer's ID number. And that information needs to be cared for there. And in most cases, there has been some state tax withheld as well as the federal tax withheld. It is used to report designated distributions from profit sharing, retirement plans, IRAs, pensions, insurance contracts, survivor income benefit plans, permanent and total disability payments under life insurance contracts, charitable gift annuities, and annuity income to taxpayers. Death benefit payments made by employers that are not part of the pension, retirement plan, or profit sharing are also reported in box one. Now, generally, if the payments are subject to withholding of Social Security and Medicare taxes, 
it is not Form 1099-R that is used, but rather you may find a W-2 or even a 1099 miscellaneous. Distribution is a payment received by the taxpayer from their pension or annuity. There are, and don't mistake the word contributions versus distributions. Contributions are not necessarily meaning that they are tax deductible or, or a tax credit to you. But a distribution most of the time does require you to include that as taxable income. If the taxpayer contributed after tax dollars to their pension or annuity plan, they can exclude part of it of each annuity payment from income as a recovery of their cost. This tax-free part of the payment is figured when their annuity starts and remains the same each year, even if the amount of the payment changes. The rest of each payment is taxable. Any money received from a traditional IRA, individual retirement account, is a distribution and must be reported as income in the year it was received. And that would re be reported on Form 1040, line 15A if it's non-taxable, or 15B if it's taxable. Or it also can be used reported on Form 1040A. That's line 11A for non-taxable, 11B for taxable. There are also 401k distributions. We also see a lot of 403Bs, another type of retirement plan that the employee contributes to, generally seen in the healthcare industry. Contributions to a 401k plan are tax deferred. Therefore, the distributions are fully taxable. Your contributions are a pre-tax dollar, lowering your tax liability at the time of contribution into your plan. Distributions must be reported as income in the year received. Again, Form 1040 is, in this case, line 16A or B, or Form 1040A lines 12A or B. An owner or participant of a traditional IRA must begin taking required minimum distributions when they turn 70 and a half. The first distribution must be made no later than April 1st of the following calendar year in which the owner turns 70 and a half. Once the first required minimum distribution or RMD has been taken, the taxpayer may select the terms of the distribution, for example, monthly or annually, and the distribution must be made by December 31st of each year. They apply to all IRAs the taxpayer may have vested. If the taxpayer made non-deductible contributions in prior years, the preparer will need to use Form 8606, non-deductible IRAs, and Coverdell ESAs to figure the percentage of the distribution that is non-taxable. Now, you, like I said, you will have and see 1099-Rs from young people because in general, if the taxpayer receives a 401k distribution before age 59 and a half, including an involuntary cash out from a traditional IRA, Roth IRA, or other qualified retirement plan, or a modified endowment contract, the taxable part of the distribution is subject to an additional 10% penalty. And there may be an applicable percentage for state as a penalty. These are recorded and you include those in other taxes on the second page of the 1040. Sadly, many people, when they do take monies out early, are not informed of these additional penalties, let alone the fact that that distribution is taxable income. Now, there could be excess contributions tax for IRA. You complete form uh, Part 3 of Form 5329 if either in this year or in earlier years, contributions to an IRA were more than allowed. If you remember, uh, and the, the issue becomes, I contribute, and right now the maximum is $5,000 per year or $6,000 if over the age of 50 into your IRA. If you by chance 
put 6,000 into there, that portion that is greater than what you're allowed will become a, you will be penalized on that and pay a 6% annual fee for as long as you do keep that additional amount in there. So as soon as you can deduct it or de, you know remove it, the better. Rollovers are tax-free transfers of funds from one retirement plan to another retirement plan. Be sure to work with your existing retirement plan managers to make sure that it gets properly rolled over into another retirement plan to where you won't pay taxes. Interestingly, even though it does not qualify and it is tax-free, it is still an amount that you will receive on a 1099-R and it will have under box seven a distribution code of G, the letter G. That will indicate to you that it is a rollover and it will show up on your 1040, but not as taxable income. A lump sum distribution is the distribution within a single tax year of an employee's qualified retirement plan's entire balance from all of the employer's plans of one kind, for example, profit sharing, pension, and stock bonus. Highly recommend if you know of clients that might be interested in doing this to advise them of the tax implications, which for a lump sum distribution could be a sizable amount of money, which will you know, dramatically increase your tax. Conversions. A taxpayer can also convert a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. The conversion is treated as a rollover regardless of the conversion method used. What is a Roth IRA? It is never a tax deduction because it is not pre-tax dollars up front. For example, if I have a Roth IRA and from my payroll I am submitting $1,000 a year into my Roth IRA, it does not impact my taxable income. It does not reduce my taxable income. I continue to have all of my income to be taxable. Whereas a traditional IRA of $1,000 would lower my taxable income by $1,000. But a Roth IRA has the same general requirements as the traditional IRA. The taxpayer for a qualified distribution, the taxpayer does not include in his gross income qualified distributions or distributions that are a return of his regular contributions from his Roth IRA. So it has not become taxable income. Also, there is not the requirement as a traditional IRA to have minimum required distributions after the age of 70 and a half. Social Security. Social Security system was designed to provide supplemental monthly benefits to taxpayers who contributed to the system. In addition, it provides Medicare benefits and certain death and disability insurance. It is indexed for inflation. Social Security is reported on form SSA-1099. Box 5 is the amount that will be reported on the taxpayer's return. It is also important to research and review the percentage of Social Security benefits that will be taxable. Not all Social Security benefits received will be taxable. There are formulas in place to determine how much of Social Security is taxable dependent on other incomes received in addition to Social Security. There is also a railroad retirement recipients that are not covered under Social Security. Now, railroad retirement began before Social Security and the recipients receive more money than they would under Social Security. But this system was eliminated and the two were combined under Social Security many years ago, many decades ago. So the chances that you will encounter someone who still receives a railroad retirement pension will be very slim. They were, for the most part, before the 1930s. So you won't usually see one. Just be aware if you do receive the RRA 1099. Well, that completes this chapter. Access your online Chapter 8 review questions and the TPAs. 
and then read chapter 9 ahead of time. Thank you.